lot of things to check before <laughs> before we start. Okay, uh, so we talked about uh, how to, uh, we talked about uh, about how we can set up a study. We talked about how we can create. Uh, we said that study includes data sources and activities. About activities, we talked about uh, how we can create surveys, and then we talked about all the data sources, how we can look at the data. One thing that we, I, I mentioned we are working on but we didn't really talk about is other type of data so the type of activities that participants can, can uh, do that's different than surveys. That uh, the couple of them that uh, is actively under development and we expect to be done by next month. One is time use interface. The interface is specifically for, uh, designed for entering time use data. Uh, the other one uh, is uh, cognitive tasks or cognitive games that uh, uh, that's used during the study. Uh, two other that we expect to finish by the end of the summer. One is integration with uh, ASA 24 and a general nutrition and expense tracker similar to the time use activity. Uh, uh, so I wanted to show uh, these, uh, these, these activities in a demo. Uh, sorry, this is a... Okay, uh, first, um, the first is the uh, cog cognitive task. We have designed four of them so far, but the same logic applies to any uh, any other cognitive task or uh, or, um, or mini games or any sort of intervention. Honestly, it has to be. It should, doesn't have to be necessarily a cognitive task that's uh, that's validated. It can be something that uses data from. Uh, participants and present them a certain interface uh, based on their data. Uh, we talked, for example, yesterday with Shrill that how we can use a similar approach to collect participants, to present a, some sort of a report based on the participants' data, the surveys that they have provided, the uh, sensor data that they have provided. The three that I wanted to show is for, uh, it's mostly focused on uh, the first two, the time preference. The, I'll go one by one and explain what they do. Uh, the time preference task is for a study in economics that uh, as the, it, it, you can see that it looks just like a user triggered survey. There's a button here, but when I click on this button, it opens a completely different interface that uh, is completely designed specific for this specific study. Uh, for this, the task is that the participants will be given $50 and they have to decide how much they want to receive now or how much they want to receive later with an interest. So there is a description here they can read, and this is uh, just a trial to see that how it works. They say tap anywhere to begin. I tap here, so I want to have fifty dollars now, zero dollars later, or I want to have fifty dollars later, zero zero dollars now. This is an example. I can say, well, I want to have fifty dollars now, zero dollars later. And it also says choose carefully. You may be selected to participate in a lottery where you will, where you will receive the real dollar amounts you choose deposited into your bank account. So if I press this, it goes through 12 rounds and one of them says the sooner amount is in four weeks I get $50 or in 12 weeks I get $50 with 0% interest. And basically this is just the design of this particular uh, cognitive task. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go through this, these 12. The data that's being collected here is every in every round, what is the value uh, uh, that I chose? Like for example, it says that in round six, the participant chose to be paid $50 on uh, uh, sooner in within four weeks and $0 later. That, or I can say, uh, I can choose this one and it says that in round six, the participant decided to receive $0 sooner and all of them later in eight weeks with 3% uh, with interest. I'm just gonna go through the other. Next. Now, there is a, a, a probability going on here that, that says with a certain percentage, I can be selected to uh, uh, enter this draw. Uh, this, uh, and here it says, that yes, I've been selected. I say, let's go, spin. Says yes. So I won the lottery, uh, uh, the, um, the money of round 11, which is $13 for sooner and $37 for later. I press submit. It basically just that's the uh, that's the task. And just similar that you, uh, similar to the survey interface, you can configure this to be presented at certain intervals or just one time or any other. The same concept of 
triggering logics and uh, sessions, how much time they have to expire time, how much time they have to respond to this before it expires. All of those concepts apply here as well. Uh, the other one is uh, another task very similar to this called other regarding preference, which basically says, it's a bit more uh, uh, complex. I think it says uh, how much money the participant would prefer uh, to receive himself, how much money to receive uh, the other person would receive, but the dollar does, amount doesn't necessarily, um, uh, it's not that if you receive one dollar more yourself, the other person receive one dollar less. For example, here I can receive $85 my, myself or $66 the other person. Uh, or here, for example, I can receive $56 myself or $76 someone else. It, uh, it, the focus here is that how people would divide, uh, how people would divide them, uh, uh, would divide uh, an amo some amount of money between themselves and other participants, uh, knowing that, for example, whether they would get more money or the other person would get more money. Uh, I'm quickly going to go through these so we can see the, and it has a very similar interface at the end as well. Okay. And this time it says I was not selected to, uh, to, to, to win this lottery. Okay. So I think it set the uh, probability to 50%, so it's easier to, to uh, demo. I think in the actual study, the, the probability was 5% or 10% that with that probability the participant was, was selected to be paid the actual amount. And the last example is a Stroop, which is a, uh, um, a, a color-based game that you will see a color and then a text below it and you have to say whether it matches or not. I think the first one, it gives you, well, this is a demo. It says blue is blue, yes. Uh, red, e yellow is red, no, it's correct. And then you get 30 seconds to do as many as possible. It shows your score on top, blue is blue, yes. I haven't done it in a live demo, so that's a bit harder. Uh, no, yes, no, 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 yes. No. Okay, anyway, it gets, <laughs> it gets hard. <laughs> Actually, the next one is even harder. Uh, so I scored 26, that's just too bad. Uh, and, and the next uh, is part of the game is you have to read the text that's written in a color and say whether that's, it's that color or not. Uh, and so this uh, blue that's written in ye red, it's not a yellow, so no. And you have, I think this is a, uh, this is a practice. Now I, I have two and a half minutes to go through this. Uh, yeah, we can just stand here for two and a half minutes so we to see the, the final score. Or you can see that you can just, uh, there's a sound playing as well, but because the phone is mute, you can't hear it. Just gonna press back. Yeah, so these are three examples of cognitive tasks that we saw, maybe if, uh, as we talk about this. Uh, oh, my phone right now shows, do, do you see it? Or could you see the, the could you see anything on the on the screen? Okay, because right now it doesn't show anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. So these are few examples of these cognitive tasks. It can be uh, literally anything that uh, um, that the study had that that's relevant to the study. These three examples don't use any of the past data for the, from the participant, but they very well can use the, the integrated data in the, in, in the interface as well. And uh, these are uh, presented as independent activities that they have to do, but they also can be embedded in the, in the survey. If you remember, one of the survey questions that we, uh, we looked at was a task question. Uh, you can start this. And uh, that I mentioned that this is a cognitive task that you can ask a few questions and then ask participants to complete this cognitive task and then you can ask a few other questions. This can be embedded in the, sur in the survey interface that for example they have a few questions, a few pages of questions, they respond to that, then they will be presented with, with this activity to complete it, then they will continue to the, uh, uh, to the other uh, questions that they have to respond to. Uh, 
uh, I, I need to uninstall this uh, and install a separate application to show uh, the time use interface. Uh, any questions so far about uh, uh, about the cognitive tasks and about uh, designing interventions for a study? Or any comments? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so we are working on the interface of them as well because one thing we have learned uh, in our previous interface is that the buttons sometimes can be confusing uh, because people think, like some people thought because the button is here they have to keep completing it. They, the, for user triggered in the, uh, surveys, they would respond to it once, they would complete it, they would go back to the home screen and say, oh, the button is still there. They would try to respond as many times as possible to let, to. Uh, uh, make sure to, to let the button go away <laughs> and they would respond to it like 10 or 20 times or something. And, uh, so we are working on the interface here to, uh, uh, to simplify it a bit, to make sure it's easier to understand. But when uh, uh, the, the same triggering logics that we have can apply here as well. And when uh, this activity is triggered, it can't, it's not survey anymore. When this activity is triggered, we, the participant receives a notification, text message, email, or in-app notification to complete this. And when they complete it, the button for that disappears uh, until next time. Yes. Uh, so for the surveys, if you s the way that it works right now is that if it's user triggered, the button doesn't disappear because you want the user to initiate it anytime they want it. But if it's time triggered, they respond to it once and then it disappears. The problem that happened was actually with some of the researchers who thought they have to set it as user triggered, but somehow if the user responds once, then it disappears. Uh, of course, this is not the way the system is designed. And we need to work on some of the wordings of the labels. Like for example, right now we simply say actions but the wording should be a bit more clear that this is not something that you just have to respond, it, respond to it like 10 times. You just have to respond to it anytime you want while the other ones are time sensitive because for example, if it's, if it's something that's specifically triggered right now and you only have one hour to respond, you have to definitely finish it within the next hour, otherwise it expires. Versus these ones, for example, just stay there and you can start anytime you want. So I'm gonna quickly uninstall this version and install another one here. This is another, this is also Ethica app, but we uh, used a different theme uh, for another project that was called Making Ends Meet that was customized for that, that uh, was using a time use data, at an interface to capture time use data. But uh, so everything works exactly as the normal Ethica app, but the only difference is that was the naming and the theme of the application, the skin of the application was, uh, was changed. The, what we are working right now is to add this to the researcher dashboard so researchers can choose whether they want this interface to capture time use data or not and also integrate a similar interface to create uh, with the uh, um, expense tracking uh, functionality and also nutrition tracking functionality. And then I'll talk about ASA24 as well, that how we can use that. So you can see here when they press this button, the interface that's designed is uh, again, customized to enter uh, time use data. On top, you can see days that you, uh, like this is the Tuesday 25th. I can go back and see previous week, or I can come here on, tw now I'm on 25th. And right now the day is, of course, I haven't entered any data, and it shows uh, here that is 0%. 
I can say, well, I was sleeping from midnight to, for example, 6 a.m. And now this is just a survey that's created in the survey editor. You link that to here, and you just specify that this calendar question should be used to specify the uh, uh, should be used to specify the time range that's that's supposed to show to be shown in the calendar. So here I say, well, yes, from 12 to 6 a.m. What I was doing, I was sleeping. Uh, this is also a normal uh, a, a, a text question in the survey editor. You can add it uh, where you were at home alone. Very persistent. Okay, because it, it, this uh, I have to start it again. Six forty-five. I was sleeping. Yeah, you can see that now it shows a block that I was sleeping. I can just go ahead and do the uh, the rest of this. For example. Uh, I was having breakfast. At home, alone, and so on. And you see, as I respond, this uh, section on top shows, shows what percentage of day is being completed. A similar interface can uh, can be created for uh, expense tracking and nutrition tracking. You basically specify what you ate or uh, what you purchased on which on each day, and it shows the list. Of course, then the calendar interface is not the relevant interface here. You would need to, uh, okay, let me see, I can't scroll here. I can scroll here. Uh, you, you, uh, you would need to show them based on the items that they purchased on that day. I think I can also, yeah, I can create from, for, uh, an interface, an event saying from 6.30 to 7.30, from uh, 6.30. To 7:30, I was watching TV at home. Sorry. I just adjust that to show that there are these two events happening. Okay. Uh, now for uh, for ASA 24. Uh, the reason that we are uh, we are integrating with them. So the similar interface can be used for nutrition tracking, fine for uh, for tracking expenses. But uh, in our system, we don't have uh, the, da the data at the, de the, the, the same level of details that a system like ASA24 has. They have the list of all the foods with their nutrition, with their uh, with the meal si uh, sizes, and so on. Uh, so the way that we are working to integrate ASA24 is that. Uh, when you want to use that system for a study, you specify uh, whether it's a record or it's a recall, and you specify when participants can do it. There, there are se certain settings that uh, you have to specify to create your study on uh, ASA24 website. Uh, they basically roughly match to the same definition of uh, triggering logic and sessions that we have. And you also have to provide participants with uh, username password. You basically provide, you create a, 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 cert, a set of username passwords, you share it with participants. They can log in, and they have a certain number of days, uh, usually either until the midnight of the day, the next day that they logged in, or 8 a.m. of the next day. I think that's the settings that ASA24 has. Uh, so the way that uh, our integration will work is that you will send, uh, the system will send notifications to participants, asking them to complete their, uh, uh, their recall. And there will be a button like this here that's written my calendar. It can write like uh, my, uh, my food diary. When they tap on it, the system, it's you, you, in advance, you have to create this set of username passwords and upload it to the Ethical's website. And then Ethical assigns these username passwords to uh, participants' accounts. When they tap here, it uses the user and password that was randomly generated for them to log them in. And the very first page that they see is the first page of the ASA24, which they can uh, enter their data. And the system knows that because, this, so for example, you say every three months you want your participants to 
uh, complete one food recall. Uh, but you want to give them one week or two weeks to complete it. But ASA24 only allows you from the time that you log in until 8 a.m. the next day. So the system keeps messaging them for two weeks to start this, uh, this data entry. But as soon as they tap on this button and they go to ASA24, the system changes its notification behavior because it knows that from now on, the clock is ticking. They only have to either complete it within two days or the session is or, or on by 8 a.m. next day or it's expired. So it constantly notifies them that, hey, you only have, for example, 12 more hours to complete it. Please do it, otherwise it gets, gets expired. The reason that we, uh, we have decided to do this is that for a few studies that they did a, 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 an ASA24 component alongside Ethica, they noticed that the compliance with ASA24 was a lot lower because of the, because the whole interface is a bit cumbersome. You have to share username and password with participants. Participants have to remember that and then have to enter it and complete it and it's a separate uh, website. Uh, the numbers I believe was that for time use, uh, the uh, uh, compliance rate we got at the end of a five month period was around 88.5% while what, what we received with ASA24 component was something around 60%. And this can, uh, this whole uh, integration that this way the participants doesn't need to remember what was their username, what was their password. We keep reminding them about, about completing it. That can uh, help a lot with the, well first the study management, especially if the sample size is large, it's really hard to manage all of this. And also it can improve their compliance as well. And then you can link the data that you get from here with the same data that you get from ASA24 because when you generate those, those username and passwords in their webs on their website and you upload it to Ethica, Ethica knows that this user used this data, this user, this user used this username. So for example, user ID 13200 uh, in Ethica is mapped to this particular user on uh, uh, ASA24 site. The data will remain on uh, ASA24 website. S if, uh, some statistics of that will come to, uh, to Ethica site, and that's uh, a few information like whether they completed it or not, how many entries they created, and uh, I believe, uh, and, and when they completed it, these, these information. But what did they choose, what did they enter, uh, that will not be part of the system. They will see, yes, they will see that this person's part, uh, participant ID is this, and this person's username and password in, on ASA24 website was this. And then they have to just uh, link these two data separately outside of, outside of Ethica, yeah. Because ASA24 doesn't allow accessing, like accessing the, their data via API. But you can download the data in CSV and then link them separately. Yeah, so these are the interfaces still through the website. We can't uh, 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 create an, uh, an, uh, uh, and uh, adjust it just as we did with surveys, but uh, we hope that this will be added within the next two or three months. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that, that will be uh, basically just will be very similar to this in terms of being like showing days. Uh, but the difference is that uh, uh, it doesn't have a calendar interface because uh, it doesn't matter what time of the day you purchase something or it's too much burden for asking participants to uh, specify that and showing the expenses on a calendar. Uh, but we'll list them, the items that's interested as they enter it. Okay, I'm gonna pause this. This was a, a short session we wanted to have to talk about the, uh, uh, these few interfaces that we wanted to, to discuss. And uh, okay, yeah, and uh, I think for the uh, rest of the session, we are scheduled to talk about the, the, mm, the projects uh, for I think a, a around half an hour, and then we'll switch to uh, recruitments and uh, ethics. Considerations. Okay. Uh, yes, we can do that. Yeah.